Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Dying Legacy, and you're here to learn how to DPS. Or to at least refrain from DPSing the minds of your party members who've been in the same duty with you for the last four hours, and are now playing rock, paper, scissors to see who gets the honor of deciding your future. With that out of the way, this is a quick six step role guide for DPSing in Final Fantasy XIV. The golden rule of DPSing in Final Fantasy is that every role DPSs. It doesn't matter if you're a tank or healer, as tanks have burst phases and even the sage relies on DPSing to heal. But first things first, let's choose a DPS job to begin with. For this, we'll stick to the DPS specific jobs. In the Endwalker expansion, we have a choice for 11 jobs specifically for the DPS role, excluding Blue Mage, that's a conundrum unto itself. We have a choice of melee DPS, physical range DPS, and magical caster DPS. Let's start with melee. They prefer to be up close and personal so they can trash talk bosses. First up is the Monk. They are basically Bruce Lee, they prefer a good combo, but also prefer to be gluten free. Next up is the Dragoon, they wield a pointy stick. They hate dragons, but also like to dress as them to express that hatred. They like to jump around and get gravity to do their dirty work. We also have the Ninja, they're incredible at hide and seek, but continuously make Naruto references that they don't really understand. Believe it. The Samurai believes in sharp swords and big damage, but remember it's not size that matters, it's the skill involved. Lastly, we have the Reaper. They have a Grim Reaper aesthetic, but struggle with reality and rely on their imaginary friend to pitch in every now and again. Next we have physical range jobs, they prefer guns, bows and sharp dishware. Starting with the Bard, sporting a bow and an array of musical instruments, they also possess a charming personality capable of threatening your marriage. Next is the Machinist, they come packing guns, grenades, flamethrowers and rocket launchers. You don't need charisma if you have an armory in your pocket. Lastly, we have the Dancer. Before you get ahead of me, no, they don't use capoeira. They throw metal discs capable of decapitating a disgruntled audience member from 20 feet away. That covers all the physical ranged. Are you still with me? You are? Good. So it's just the casters left. First up is the Black Mage. They are basically climate change in a black robe. Fantastic at standing in circles and won't move for anyone because damage is king. We also have the Red Mage for players that like ranged damage but also like to get up close and personal because they have a sticker book of their victim's last words that they want to complete. And finally the Summoner for players who like the idea of levelling a healer for free on the side and also summoning Bahamut because apparently nobody remembers pre or Realm Reborn. Oh and before I forget, also all the tanks and healers. But hey, I went over those in my last videos, you can find the links in the description because again, everyone DPSs. I am assuming you've chosen a job at this point because I'm not going over that again. Right, moving on so, let's begin. Step 1. Off Global Cooldowns These are abilities that can be used at any time and don't get a 2 second cooldown after another skill has been used. So why is this a step? Well, these can be used in between skills while everything is on cooldown. We call this Double Weaving. Double Weaving will increase your DPS substantially because you aren't standing around for 2 seconds waiting to use another skill, which is the Global Cooldown. You'll notice some of these skills have longer cooldowns, but don't bother saving these for later. The cooldowns aren't that long and your DPS will improve immensely. I suggest only using one between combos and skills. Using more than that in a two second window will just be a waste. And it will cause you to be standing around again. So get your hands out of your pockets and earn that kill. Step two, self slash party buffs. Very self-explanatory, these abilities buff you and or your party. These come in many, many types, from increasing damage to increasing stats, even defensive or otherwise. The goal here is the same as step 1. Don't ration them. A 40 second to a minute cooldown is not very long. Rather than using it once on the last boss, use it on cooldown. It will speed up your encounters and dungeons and such immensely. And you get nothing except a slower run from hoarding these skills. Unless you are playing one handed I suppose. Step 3. Always be casting. When I say always be casting, I mean it. If you're not DPSing, then you're doing zero damage. Many classes have ranged abilities and dots that can be applied to do some sort of damage against an enemy that's flown off or hidden itself behind AoEs or mechanics. And if you're using one of the few classes like Monk that can't deal damage from range, then you can just start to pool and charge your resources, so that when you can finally hit the target, you can hit it hard and fast. Not to mention if the boss is on the ground hiding behind AoEs, you can use your gap closers to almost warp to the target, so you can continue to attack and still avoid damage. So always be doing something, as you'll always do more damage than the player that decided not to do anything. Step 4. Pay attention. This is key. 
because a dead DPS does no damage and a healer reviving a dead player also does no damage and a healer that has to stop DPSing to heal you because you couldn't be bothered to avoid the mechanic or avoidable damage is obviously not dealing damage. So if the ground glows, move out of the way. And on the topic of ground AoE, and if you see arrows in the ground moving outwards in a pushing motion, you'll notice after seeing it a few times that these cause knockbacks, which will knock you away and stop you casting, which is also less DPS. This can be avoided by using arm's length for tanks, DPS and physical range DPS, or sure cast for healers and casters. This negates the knockback, making it as if it never happened. In some situations, this will stop you from getting knocked off a boss arena, so please do that. Step 5. Read your abilities and tooltips. If you don't actually know what anything does, then how can you possibly play the job? You can't, obviously. Save yourself the panic and trouble of understanding a job by reading its abilities. Not only will you be a far better player than those that don't bother reading their tooltips, you'll also learn that some skills have positionals, which is essentially where a skill does more damage to targets from certain angles. Either the flank, which is the sides, or the rear, which is the back, clearly. So read your abilities, and on top of that, practice them. Use a training dummy or go out into the world and terrorize enemy NPCs until you're confident in your abilities. Knowing your jobs is always the first step in being better, and you'll always be better than someone who doesn't know their job. Step six, limit breaks. There are three limit breaks for DPS roles that can be used for various situations. One for melee, one for casters, and one for physical range DPS. The melee DPS get a single target damage attack limit break that will be used the most often, as it does the most damage to a single target. The casters, on the other hand, get a wide range AoE that can hit many enemies in a circular area. And then on top of that, the physical range get a cannon style attack that fires in a straight line, hitting everything in its path until it hits its target. That's it. You're a better DPS than you were when you first hit play. Now it's all on you to follow the steps given. If you have any questions, suggestions, or even extra tips of your own, why not comment below? The best part about making videos is getting to talk to you guys after. The, the feedback will always help improve my content. Also, while you're down there, why not hit like and click subscribe? And hey, if you want to talk to me directly or you just love MMOs in general, you can find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dyinglegacy, uh, where you can find me playing RuneScape, Guild Wars 2, ESO, New World, and of course Final Fantasy XIV, uh, obviously. But as always, thanks for watching guys, take care of yourselves, and keep being awesome!